Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's me, it's Ken. We're doing the Pearson Metal thing from that there Brooklyn Independent Comics Showcase. They call it Bix. I'm calling it the full name. So check it out. Look at this. Chuck Kaslau. And he is here in the cold wind because it's really windy. And he's going to talk to us about all this awesome stuff. And hi, Chuck. How are you? Wait. Uh, here we go. I, I'm. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's no editing here. We don't pause. We were trying to save Especially a book. Especially in the wind, we're just enduring the weather. <laughs> we're just enjoying. Hey Chuck, how are you, man? Hey, Ken. Um, what a day. Yeah. This is why we love comics. We come out and we just do what we do in the weather. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself, because it's the first time I'm meeting you. So hi. Uh, it's it's a wonderful, interesting looking booth. You have a a bunch of cool things. Color me cryptid. like cryptid. Color like cryptid. Color me cryptid. Color me cryptid. Tales from the bark side and big arm energy. Big go. arm energy go. And then here's some drawings. Oh, Inktober, you did Inktober stuff. So let's start from uh, Brooklyn Bordum. Look at that. That looks like them shopping bags you all carry around, doesn't it? Yep. It does. And look at these cool stickers. So tell me about your stuff, and we'll start with Color Me Cryptid, because that's interesting. Yeah, it was just a friend years ago said, if you really want to make sales at a con, something that everyone loves is coloring books. So I thought, what would be making good for a coloring book? What's something that I love, that I really enjoy drawing, and it's monsters. As you can tell with like a lot of horror-based stuff, I like the creepy crawlies. Yeah. And I thought, what would be the best way? This way. But then you also get information about the monsters. So you're also feeling oh, see, like you're learning good. something, getting an education, a little history about it. Learning, you get your mainstays, but then you also get ones that are from around the world that we're not as familiar with. So you feel like you're learning more about the world and others' cultures while you're coloring. That's really cool. I love the cryptid stuff. Yeah, I like to have, I have a suspension of belief on some of these things. I think there's some stuff out there that we just don't know and I hope we don't find. Yeah, there's you a know? lot of dark depths that we haven't reached. And I think there's a lot of creepy crawlies out there. Aliens definitely exist. Yeah. Don't even consider that a cryptid. No, that's just that's, a real life thing. Right, right, right. So what's Tales from the Bark Side? Tales that's a great title. Tales from the Bark Side. So I am obviously a fan of Tales from the Dark Side, Tales from the Crib, all the EC horror comics. So I used to dog walk a lot and it's fun. I enjoy it, but I also knew they were scary creatures at heart and I wanted to do a little mix of the two things that I knew and so we got Tales from the Bark Side. You get a little silly horror. It's campy. It's not too serious. I would say it's a B, like a B-grade movie. It's something a little schlocky and fun. So the dogs are doing the killings and the humans are getting the comeuppance for what they've done. So, uh, sweet, sweet. That's fun. Yeah. Scary, but Scary, fun. Scary, but fun. Now, what is Big Army, Big Arm Energy Go? So during the pandemic, I had a friend that was doing a wordless comic, and I was envious, and I had a lot of free time on my hands, and a lot of wrestling videos that I was ingesting at the time. <laughs> so I wanted to do something that would really push me to an artistic level that I haven't really experienced. And so as a comic, it's a non-stop, cover-to-cover action comic with a menagerie of maniacal menaces trying to stop a guy with a big energized arm from escaping. And as you can see, it's a lot of art that I'm not usually my style. Real pushing myself as an action comic with new perspectives. So you're a big wrestling fan still, or? I like it. I feel like I watch a lot more like the older stuff. I haven't been caught up with The older stuff was so great. Yeah, huh? like the, I'm a big Stone Cold fan. That was definitely my era of watching. My era Attitude. was Hulk and uh, Macho yeah, Man. Yeah, uh, Macho Man. I had a Macho Man blacklight that did sell at the last con that I was at. There were, there were no wrestlers like these people back then. No, it was they like, were real larger than life personalities. I mean, it was, it, you know, to, to date myself, there was nothing like the excitement when someone like Ultimate Warrior came into the... And they're just cool. Oh, crazy, just so cool. Unleashing his inner beast. I love it. I'm getting geeky now. So what is Brooklyn Boredom? Brooklyn Boredom is... Me. It's a slice of life fictional, non fictional store, uh, comic strips, really, of just the day to day living, the weird shit and the weird people that you're encounter, getting through day by day. 
So it's me just extrapolating the truths to kind of make a little bit more of a surreal slice of life. So you'll get just like struggles with dealing with people on the subway, the street, trying to get your work done. One of them with dealing with bugs in your apartment. Just the grossness and the weirdness of life is what it's defined by. And are you bored yet? <laughs> awesome. So how how has this convention? It's a convention. Whether yeah, or not. you know, I'd say it's gained definitely to that. It's definitely grown in numbers in the years since it's begun. And this is the third one, right? Yes, the third one. And when I was talking with Ainsley, who runs it, he said that it doubled in the amount of people since last year. So it's definitely getting a presence in Brooklyn. And I think because it's a free event as well, a lot of people want to come out and see what's done. It's an affordable event. So a lot of people are able to apply and try to like see how things are. Get there and let's just now. take a look while Chuck, look at this. Like, this is how many people are here. And this is how many boots are here. I'm going to say there's over 100 boots, right? There's 200 boots. 200 boots. And there's some inside. So yes, we were upstairs. Because it's a little cold today, my friends. It is quite cold out. <laughs> They're out here selling and I'm out here hawking my media for you in the cold. So. And we're out here selling, yeah. hoping that people buy in the cold. Right. And we appreciate any patrons that come out during that. Oh man. Well, listen, Chuck, what do you got working on next? What's the next thing you're uh, gonna do? I'm trying to get another collection of Brooklyn Boredom scripts out there, but I am also working on another Tales from the Bark Side. It's gonna be a full 24 page comic called Prehistoric Rex of Neanderthal oh, that's cool. versus Werewolves. Very cool. All right, I'm going to let you get back to monitoring this table and making all that money. I thank you so much for your time. No so that's it, my friends. You know the drill. Let's click that subscribe button or whatever it is. The notification bell, yes. And like and leave a comment on the video because that lets me know you're out there and you're watching our stuff from the Brooklyn Independent Comics Showcase. Whew. It's me, it's Ken. Here's the medal. See you next time. Bye.